Welcome, Bridgers, to another edition of the Bridge Club's podcast. We are really excited because for a long time I've wanted to have a really in-depth conversation about Fear Free. It is an amazing program that has been around how long now, Brenda? Oh, golly. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Becker started working on, I think, in 2010, 2011. But, yeah, so a long, long time. So uh, I'm Catherine Haskins. I've got uh, Bren, uh, Brenda Andreessen with me, co-founders of the Bridge Club. And we have two amazing guests with us today. We have uh, Dr. Jennifer Merlot and Dr. Brian Borquin. I'm going to have both of them introduce and explain where their practices are. And then we're going to ask a couple questions on about Fear Free. So Jennifer, why don't you jump in and tell us a little bit about your practice? So I'm Jennifer Merlot. I have Chestnut Arbor Veterinary Hospital located in North Carolina. We were very excited to be the first fear-free certified practice in all of North Carolina. Um, opened the practice with the idea that it would be fear-free and we've stuck with that since day one. I think that's awesome. What about you, Brian? How long have you guys been? You're number first in Boston, right? Yes, ma'am. First in Boston to be fear-free. And what's the name of your practice again? Uh, Boston Veterinary Clinic. That is awesome. Why? I'm going to start with you, Brian. Why did you become fear-free? What was it that drew you into this notion of becoming a fear-free hospital? Well, you know, initially, I didn't even have a name for it, right? So before we called it fear-free, it was just a better way of doing things. And so uh, I remember going to my first lecture, I think, at NAVC, and like suddenly hearing that there was a, a, a concept for this. And, you know, I just wanted to do better by our patients. I mean, these are our patients. We spend all day trying to make them better. But then in the process, are we hurting them, you know, uh, behaviorally, physically? So I latched right onto this and never looked back. That's awesome. What about you, Jennifer? Um, so for me, I had kind of lost my passion for veterinary medicine. Um, wasn't enjoying going to work where patients didn't want to see us and clients were stressed out bringing their pets in. And... Uh, much like Brian, once I learned about Fear Free and learned there was a better way to do things, I jumped on board and figured we could make a difference in these pets' lives and therefore in their owners' lives. So I think it's really cool. I, I think that what, what Dr. Becker brought forward has, has really tried to revolutionize the profession, but a lot of people, a lot of practices are a little fearful about it, not to bring the same fear free into place because of what is it tax on a practice? How challenging is it? Brian, how long did it take you guys to implement fear free? I think uh, about six months from, from start to finish of the actual uh, application process. But you know, when you look at the, the initial training of all the staff members, um, you know, probably close to eight months and then, you know, actually got the accreditation of the practice. Well, it seems like a lot to me, but I think there's something that you said, Jennifer, that really resonates with me and, and also with Brenda, and that is the idea that it was, you know, six, eight months of implementation because what does it give you down the road? So talk to us about that. So Fear Free is really about the long-term benefit to these patients and their owners. Um, it is... It can be tough in the day-to-day -day or maybe in the individual cases, but when you start to see patients that were once fearful of coming into the vet's office now come in, trotting in, happy to see you, wanting to come and get procedures and, and see you get their treats, um, knowing that you've made that difference for them and their future veterinary visits, it's very rewarding. That's amazing. Brian, was there any point during the process, though, that you were like, oh, this is very hard? Well, I mean, like, you know, AHA accreditation, any of these accreditations, after a while, you just keep looking at them. The list just seems to get longer and longer. <laughs> but, but, you know, they were super helpful. And, you know, basically, you know, I remember calling once and being like, we're not ready, we're not ready. And, you know, the person that was our, was our mentor was like, you know, we would, we're not going to let you fail. Um, if you're the point of, if you're the point of ap applying for this, then you're there. <laughs> and so I was just, you know, not being fearful myself. I had to like, take my own advice and just go for it. And uh, the, the quote exam um, or the visit went extraordinarily well, very supportive group. And um, yeah, just, you know, keep, keep plugging away. So Jennifer, just as, a, as we uh, come to wrap this up, uh, what, what do you tell someone who is really interested in doing this, but they're, they're a little tentative? What do you say to someone, a hospital that's interested in becoming fear free? Do it. I, I have no regrets for doing it. Honestly, I think the staff love it. Our clients love it. Um, our clients that moved away or left um, left the area look for clinics that are fear-free certified. They go in expecting a different level of veterinary care um, than they were used to getting. And knowing that we've 
made that change in their mind is reason enough to do it. So I love this, the comment that Jennifer made that said, I came out of this understanding my patients more, right? I mean, as a veterinarian, yeah. you get into this, you get into that business because you want to work with pets and you want to help make their lives better. And the fact that you feel like you've, you've gained an understanding of what they need and what they want, I think is phenomenal. Absolutely. Well, and adding on to that is what Brian said is that now people are saying you want to go to that practice because they do things differently. Um, so for any practice who is interested in becoming fear free, we do highly recommend it. We do hope that you join us at the Bridge Club for this conversation. Um, so special thank you very much uh, to Dr. Jennifer Merlot and Dr. Brian Borquin. They will be joining us on the Bridge Club this week for a fantastic conversation. If you are hearing this podcast post the date of this conversation, please log on to our website become an all-access member, and you too will have access to the entire conversation. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us at the Bridge Club. Thanks, guys. Cheers.